that, that are some contenders in the long smoke, uh, slow smoke competition. Yeah, yeah. They were, man, they were, they were trashing some Texas tea. And it's like, dude, <laughs> it ain't the tobacco, man. Like, like, you know, you, just, you need to own up. We saw so, Briar got you just got to own wife. up to your own uh, limitation. Yeah, no, Bri Briar, our, our good friend and longtime listener and, and, and friend here at the shop. Uh, got beat by his uh, his uh, younger brother who hardly smokes a pipe and his wife. He got so, beaten by his brother and his wife. Here right in the shop. Here in the shop. He got beaten by his wife. We sat here and watched we, it we happen. Shot, we watched it happen. Uh, we didn't intervene at all. I mean, it, he had it coming. Yeah, no, he did. He, he really did. He, he was he asking really for did. it. She, right. did, she did a fantastic job. Right. <laughs> she really did. Uh, and then, of course, you know, uh, those of you who've been tuned in for the last couple of weeks, you know that, uh, that we've been building up not just to the Jackson Pipe Night, but also the UK uh, pipe show happened this last past weekend. Now, uh, we had the, uh, the the War of the Roses. We'll talk a little bit more about this later because we we know now who the winner of the War of the Roses is. I don't know yet. I know that we we have the results in. We'll read we those the at results. the end oh. of the show. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. Great, okay. I'm, I'm really looking forward to Man, that. That's awesome. I, I have a feeling that, that history is going to correct itself and, and York is going to triumph uh, be triumphant, but we will find out near the end of the show. Um, we do have here at the top of the show, though, prizes that we're going to be giving out to uh club members now those of you who are tuning <laughs> y'all are already on it on the on the memes and stuff. oh that's fantastic <laughs> we do have some uh some gifts to give out uh some prizes to give out to club members man yeah dude this is great you know we uh this was actually um kicked off last month by a listener uh and friend of the show uh you know we were given a can of uh of penzance he had he'd tried a can of penzance um, uh, Barry Pettis, he's actually from South Mississippi, and uh, to try, you know, he was able to get his hands on a can of Penzance, tried one bowl, and was like, you know, this really isn't for me, but it's such a coveted tobacco, mm. I'm not going to let it go to waste. I'm going to gift it to to Country Squire Radio, and we and we uh, chose to gift it back to back to you guys. And so um, we just decided, you know, in light of that, just to kind of make October the month of treats. And so uh, each week we debuted a, a different thing that we just decided to give out. And so we've got uh, Penzance, we've got uh, uh, Pembroke, we've got Hunting Creek uh, from the Country Squire. We've also got uh, Corn Cob Pipe uh, and a Button Nose from uh, Cornell and Deal. So, <laughs> all, all, the, uh, all, all the way, the yeah. treats that'll lead you all the way up to Christmas. No, that's right. Yeah, so we're uh, so we're gonna uh, we're giving gonna, all this out tonight. Gonna give all those out tonight to uh, Country Squire Radio Club members. Oh yep. snap! All right, so Great. should we say that at the end of the episode we'll, we'll make the official announcement then? Uh, yeah. Wh whatever you think. If you yeah, that's probably good. Well, we'll yeah, give we'll it out do, the, do it at the end. I do want to say though, That'd this is going specifically to club members who signed up uh, uh, from the beginning up until. Uh, uh, this episode being recorded so we got to give a okay. shout out to new club members yeah man we got joining yeah. at the squire level uh darshan patel yeah darshan uh, thanks man shout out to Deshaun. Uh, he's he is a squire member uh so thank you so much for joining at the squire level we also have at the pilgrim level kevin Kethcart. 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 I, th I think it's Kethcart. All right. So it may be Keith Cart. Keith Cart. But you, but I bet it's Kethcart. All right. <laughs> so his name was Keith. His mom left him in a cart, and then they just decided to call him Kevin. I Welcome, think that's it. And thanks for joining at the Pilgrim level, brother. <laughs> that's we really right, appreciate man. That. Absolutely. We're so grateful to y'all. So you guys are in the running as well. Stay tuned to the end of the show to find out who the winner is. And last thing I'll say before we jump into the meat and potatoes of this episode is, of course, that we've got the uh, Country Squire Radio uh, Corn Cob Pipe custom corn cob pipe competition going on as well dude that's right if you haven't picked up a missouri meerschaum pipe and started working on your custom job uh do it now because we want to go get those in before uh the official date's going to be around mid-december we're going to announce that as we get closer into next month but go ahead pick up a missouri meerschaum pipe do kind of a holiday custom job on it could be santa claus could be a, a snowman could be something completely different uh you know maybe you're really into the power rangers and you want to make the red power ranger but he's santa <laughs> and you want to make that out of a corn cob pipe uh, pick yourself up in Missouri Mirshaw and, and do that. Yeah, of course. It's going to be a lot of fun. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, man. Uh, so you mentioned that, of course, uh, you, you wanted to October to be the month of treats. Uh, why is that? Uh, because it's Halloween. Oh, is it? It, it? it is. It Well, tomorrow. Is. Okay. All right. So as we record this on Monday, it's right. uh, it's Halloween. So this is Halloween week, which means right. it's our Halloween special that, episode. That's right. That's right. And, you know, every year we try to do something interesting for this particular episode. We've done Sinister Pipes that's before. Right. We've that's done right. uh, Pipe Villains before. Pipe Smoking Villains. Uh, pipe yeah. Smoking Villains, which is always fun. And um, this year we thought it'd be fun to to do, um, uh, in, instead of Sinister Pipes, we thought we'd talk about Sinister Tobaccos. You know, our, our favorite, favorite tobaccos for Halloween or maybe, uh, other reasons you, you make a great a great ghoul oh thank you yeah you, thank it, you it's you're ghastly it's fantastic <laughs> um yeah so you know we thought we would uh kind of explore this and and have a little fun with uh you know folks different uh different ideas of 
you know, what, what makes a great Halloween tobacco uh, and, and generally put it out there as sinister tobaccos. We, we wanted this to kind of be uh, listener driven, which is always fun. Uh, we have our own uh, thoughts on Sinister Tobaccos, but we wanted to kind of open this up to some of the listeners. So, um, yeah, just, you know, it, it's interesting. I think a lot of folks went with, uh, you know, kind of the, the uh, you know, the obvious uh, points for uh, Sinister Tobaccos. They may have gone with something that, you know, was intentionally named something kind of devious or ghoulish. Sure. You know? uh, of course, there's a whole bunch of tobaccos that, that fall in that realm. Uh, several people mentioned uh, the rise of the monster mixture from uh from Cornell and Deal. All right, wait, hang out. on, hang on. The rise of the monster mixture. That's right. They, they come out with a, a Halloween blend each year, and 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 so the blend is is called uh, Rise of the Monster, and it's the interesting. Yeah, and so uh, anyway, they they always uh, come out with a variety of tins. There's uh, four, generally four different tins, I believe, and each one has a different artwork. But uh, on average, they're all the same tobacco. So it's one of those, you know, you kind of collect them all. Oh, okay, all right. So yeah. it's it's almost like getting like a comic book, but the cover is different. Yeah, no, that's it. right. Yeah, okay, gotcha. That, that's right. Yeah. So uh, they're always candied apple flavor and a uh, real, real uh, smooth, easy going tobacco. Okay, that, you know, you open the open the tin, and it's got this kind of uh, you know soft uh, fruity flavor, which is real easy. Going. How do you, how do you do a candy apple? You know, I think about candy apple just being something that you break your teeth onto as soon as you bite into it, and if you're able to get your teeth all the way in, you get the razor on the other side of the apple. No, yeah, <laughs> I mean, like <laughs> apples were very frowned upon <laughs> growing. No, up. that's true. That's true. Yeah, it's, yeah. No, that, that 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 makes sense. Um, yeah, you know, I, I think it's a hard blend to pull off, but they they do it well. Of course, Cornell Deal has like eight thousand six hundred and fifty blends. Oh, they're fantastic uh, in, yeah. in their uh, in their repertoire so uh you know they just make it make it fun and uh it's something that they come out with every year lots of new artwork and you can always have fun with that so um another one uh that that several members uh or, or listeners mentioned and uh you know just kind of going along with the obvious theme of uh you know halloween spooky uh you know all that kind of stuff we've got sleepy hollow from strauss tobacconist um now, sleepy hollow this is a blend uh, that's yes. been around a while you know and and several folks uh, actually recommended this we had listener uh mike heitland and gene boker both uh you know through uh the you know the club they were you know just mentioning how much they uh kind of put this right up there with their favorite um you know halloween blends it's uh, just you know a, a soft uh fruity uh flavor of the season kind dude of thing. it is so, it is a it is an aromatics aromatic tobacco yeah it really is and actually i've, I've actually got some sleep yeah right yeah now. yeah is it is it open it is so this was actually a gift from uh, uh one of our listeners in texas okay uh, dropped this on me and you know the first time i actually had uh sleepy hollow yeah. was when i was in vegas hawker the love doctor actually gave me just a little bit not a lot uh, which, not complaining, Hawker, it was delicious. And it really kind of almost made me obsessed with it because it was such a unique smoke. <laughs> have you ever smoked before? I, I haven't. I've smelled it Ta one time. Man, take a whiff of that. Because, I mean, like, you feel like you just opened up the candy box right there. Wow. Right? It is. It, it really is. does. But it. But there's... um. It smells like gingerbread. Right? Like, there's a spiciness on the end of it. It's like pumpkin spice. It's vanilla. It's there's there's a lot of flavors going on, and like you know you man, you I can I can feel up. that to my to my bones, right? All the way down to your bones. All the way down to all the way yeah. down. Man, man that that's that's interesting. It's yeah. uh yeah, you can really it, it's it's a cutting uh real real uh generously sweet flavor. It's very pleasant. Yeah, I will say this about it, and I don't know if this is just this year this particular blend, but we were smoking some right beforehand, and um man, this is it's also a very wet tobacco. Yeah, so like it's it's a challenge to keep this one lit. That that's what I hear. You know the the reviews on uh Sleepy Hollow, of course, Strauss Tobacconists. They're um they've actually been around since 1880. They're one of the oldest tobacconists in the United States, which is pretty awesome. They're in uh have two locations in Cincinnati uh, and then Florence, Kentucky. Uh, but they, um, you know, this is one of their most famous sought after blends. They've, uh, it's got a cinnamon spice note to it, uh, pumpkin. And, uh, from some folks say like, uh, kind of a warm, uh, confectionery or maybe a warm, uh, you know, pastry flavor, like a, like a bread or a spiced loaf mm, or something like that. Yeah, so, man. But yeah, it goes back to, you know, you, you do hear what you just mentioned, the, the stickiness of it. It's kind of a hard tobacco to keep lit, but, um, but it just has all those flavors of the season. And so it, uh, it, it makes a good Halloween tobacco. Oh, it's so good. 
Um, coming in, uh, you know, just uh, another one that a lot of folks uh, mentioned, just due to obvious uh, kind of reasons for, uh, you know, naming and association, the uh, Devil's Holiday Tobacco, of course, by Dan Tobacco. Hocker <laughs> uh, uh, the Love Doctor, our good friend, uh, mentioned that. And, uh, you know, honestly, I think th this tobacco, Devil's Holiday, was actually named after a song from like the, you know, 40s or something. So it, it doesn't have a lot to do with that, uh, you know, kind of. Um, you know, uh, the spooky thing other than, okay. other than just a cool name. You so know? it's kind of like the devil went down to Georgia. He was on holiday and looking I, for a stole to steal. I, I think maybe so. And then it wound up blending a great tobacco. I don't okay, know. But, all right, fair enough. Uh, Dan Is tobacco, it great though? I, uh, well, the, the reviews are good. I've actually never had it before. Interesting. We okay, have yeah. carried it in the shop, but I, I've never had it. Um, it. Dan Tobacco, of course, they're the ones that make uh, Blue Note, uh, Gordon Pym, Bill Bailey's, Balkan, uh, several uh, interesting tobaccos that these are blended in Denmark. They're all relatively hard to get, but, uh, but good, good tobaccos. Most of them are going to be, are going to be aromatic, but, uh, devil's holiday. It's got uh, blackberry, cherry, raspberry, and honey. So a lot, uh, a lot oh, going wow. on, just generally, yeah. uh, gen generally, uh, uh, you know, aromatic fruit, <laughs> food, confectionery, smorgasbord. It's like the kitchen sink of aromatics. Uh, go, is it, go in is it so, any cherry tobacco technically um, the devil's tobacco? When it I, no, it, it, it. it may be. It may I'm be particularly saying, to your tongue. Does yeah. the the album or album the, the the artwork on that one for the for the ten? Um, do you recall what that? resembled like yeah. the way they depicted the devil well yeah no he's he's uh something kind of creeping over the name of the tobacco and i think he's smoking a pipe and it's just a really bright red uh red can yeah interesting i think so, i think i've seen that when's the last time that y'all carried that uh it's been a few months now okay it's, been a few, it's not one of those real popular sellers but it's one that uh you know occasionally people come in like to try and then uh you know just to say they've uh you know had it in their collection it, it catches your eye you see it right there and it's it's like it's like this thing it's staring at you and it's like who could it be who could it be who could it be could it be satan <laughs> satan satan <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. Speaking of that, the the next one comes in <laughs> at <laughs> at number four. Uh, we've got a, a another popular one uh, that folks I think just kind of associate uh, due to the name, and that of course is uh, one of the best selling aromatics on the market right now, which is Cult Blood Red Moon. That's um, the one that actually and, I was and, thinking and, of before. And Cult, it, it's yeah. an incredibly popular tobacco, and I really, it, it's a great tobacco. It, it really is a good tobacco. It's aromatic tobacco. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, it's one of these, it's a, it's a chocolate cherry, essentially. Some people get some vanilla in it too, but, um, this is a chocolate cherry tobacco. Think, uh, like a, you know, a maraschino cherry, one of those, uh, you know, Queen Anne type cherries, uh, dipped in, uh, you know, lots of sugar syrup and chocolate and all that kind of stuff. It's really, really good. Uh, you know, it's a moist tobacco. Um, and, you know, it, I, I I don't necessarily know why it's so popular, but it really has kind of developed its own its own cult. It's the it, branding, it really has. Man. No, like there is I, something. I, I think about their the marketing town. is just stellar. Yeah. You know, it, it really has been uh, phenomenal marketing, and so um, you know, as as far as that goes, they've done a good job. Uh, promoting their brand and and it's one of the most popular aromatics right now in in the United States. So. Yeah, I I don't get into that kind of like occult iconography or anything like that. I mean, even even in like games where you have like you know the the warlock yeah. of the death knight, I typically go paladin. Yeah, like I'm, I'm all kind of about, against it, you know. But but the thing is, like there is I I do remember that ten specifically because it immediately as soon as I saw, it, I was like, what is yeah. this? It, it, it's funny, you know. I, I I generally shy away from that stuff as well. Even during Halloween, you know, I've never really dressed up as like no. a ghoul or a no, goblin or you know, death or anything like that. Yeah. I've just, that that's never really been, well, you're, too old. you're too old for that. I'm kind of too stuff old anyway. for that kind of stuff, yeah. but you know, but now it, 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 this tobacco, for whatever reason, people have smoked it. It's uh, gotten really popular and it's, uh, it, it's taken off. Yeah. 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 Interesting. So okay. uh, I, I like the take though, that a lot of our listeners had with sinister tobaccos. And this is kind of, this is a, a, an alternate route that they took on some of these tobaccos. And, and one that, uh, that I can really relate to mm. as a pipe smoker. They, a, a lot of folks took uh, the sinister tobacco route as one that, uh, <laughs> you know, a, a, a tobacco that maybe left them uh, left left them scarred a little bit. Personally somewhere. sinister. Yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah, know, yeah. Th this was this was something that they had an experience with. Maybe a <laughs> maybe a haunting or a uh, you know a, they they may as well have been uh, may have preferred to be attacked by a poltergeist. Yeah, no, no, they're, they're still smoke this particular tobacco. They're still working this tobacco out with their therapist. No, that that's right. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And you know, there's great therapists out there and they need they need work to make a living too yeah so that's, absolutely that's good and that's what these tobaccos exist and, for, and, and, and that, that's to right. put those therapists through uh you know get them get them paid. I, at, at some point at the country square we are going to create a tobacco called like mordor or something like this where <laughs> you know it's just it, it's just it's one of those things. bowser's castle well, we and i mean no there is that there is that but uh, uh interestingly enough kind of an aside note 
Uh, I have been smoking more Latakia recently myself, which is funny. I, you know, I just don't smoke a lot of Latakia. But one of the uh, Latakia blends that uh, some folks around the Squire have recently been uh, experimenting with, and I, I'm actually not the genesis of this, so I can't claim credit, but they took Bowser's Castle, which of course is like, uh, last time I checked, I think it's what, 30, 40% Latakia, something like that. But they've been mixing it with our blend black and tan. Uh, and this has become a really popular uh, tobacco. And so oh, it's just it's yeah, one of those yeah. that we may talk about more in the future and might even become one of our house blends because it's just uh, it's gotten to be really popular. So really? Anyway, stay, stay, try that. stay tuned on yeah, that. Yeah, but uh, just kind of that soft black Cavendish kind of uh, mellows the the Bowser's Castle out mm, a little bit. So, Mordor is coming. Anyway, a lot of folks went with this kind of strong tobacco that maybe uh, scarred them for, for life kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and, of course, our friend uh, Nick Curley, uh, he mentions that uh, Gaywith and Hogarth uh, Happy Brown Bogey uh, might be one of those tobaccos. It's, it's a rope tobacco, much like the other uh, Gaywith and Hogarth tobaccos that we've talked about before on the air. Uh, you know, and it, rope tobaccos, again, lots of burly, uh, heavy, heavy burly, not lots of uh, processing. So it's just very raw leaf and just tons and tons of nicotine. So, uh, you know, he, he said it is uh, certainly strong enough to be a, uh, you know, considered a, uh, a, a ghoulish Sinister tobacco. tobacco. That's yeah. right. That's right. Interesting. Okay. All right. So something that's going to knock you out. That's right. Yeah, it uh, doesn't have your best interest in mind. It, it just doesn't, you know, but probably has a great taste. Uh, of course, you know, if, if if you need to choke a goat it, it, ever in your life or, you know, well, you, you got to do that. Then, then, you know, that that yeah. will be the tobacco that you'd want to feed the goat. Right. Absolutely. So yeah. um, uh, other listeners, uh, uh, Brendan Marconi, uh, he mentioned uh, GLP's Temple Bar, which is a good tobacco. Now, we've talked about. Uh, Greg Peace, of course, good friend of the show. We, Absolutely. Uh, big fans of his tobacco. I've mentioned on multiple occasions that I want to be Greg Peace when I grow up, uh, which obviously is not going to be anytime soon. But, um, you know, Temple Bar, popular tobacco, one of his newer blends. Uh, this is uh, Virginia's, Orientals, and Perique. Uh, and, and what they do is they actually layer these uh, tobaccos in specific order and then press them into cakes. And this is sold at a pl as a plug. Uh, it's a plug tobacco that comes in the normal uh, kind of canister style uh, tin. But uh, our friend uh, Brendan, he says, uh, Temple Bar is a great, smooth, but full flavored smoke that invariably has the effect of nailing me to my seat with a serious case of the head spins. Oh, snap. Uh, and so, I, you know, I, I have a lot of experience with tobacco similar to that mm. and, uh, and think this, uh, you know, it, it qualifies certainly as a sinister tobacco. <laughs> you know, I, I love that. Uh, the, these type of tobaccos, by the way, those of you that actually submitted the uh, the ones that have personally like attacked you, that's 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 my favorite. I mean, I, I yeah. love I love the seasonal blends and everything else, but but these in particular. These no, I, yeah, no, I, I think so. The, these these have more. Uh, I don't know, kind of. Uh, direct affection, you know, for people. That, oh yeah, that, yeah, that's the best kind. Yeah, that they've they've almost, uh, you know, uh, just br brought you brought you six feet under kind of thing. Yeah, well, know, absolutely. And, and that's what we're going after. <laughs> so, uh, our good good friend Matthew Butler, who's been a long time listener, a uh, good friend of the show and and of the of the shop. Uh, he actually says uh, <laughs> one of his uh, most sinister tobaccos, believe it or not, is uh, is one of Cornell and Deal's old Christmas blends. <laughs> uh, and, what? And and it is uh, Golden Days of Yore, which I think is really neat. Uh, this is, you know, this is a, a Christmas blend, right? It's a time of joyous uh, celebration and festivities and turkey and, ah. you know, mistletoe and, ah. and, and vomiting. But but but, <laughs> but that's the thing. Don't forget in that in the song there will be scary ghost stories and da 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 da. Oh no, like, that, well, scary that's ghost stories yeah. is part of Christmas. No, that, that well that makes sense. It counts. It yeah. counts. So he says, uh, when I think sinister, I think sneaky and strong. I remember my first time smoking Cornell and Deal Christmas blend, Golden Days of Yore, thinking how pleasant of a smoke it was while drinking. Uh, well, no, I'm sorry, while driving. Uh, he was not driving and drinking. Okay, I was, he was, was actually, smoke, he was actually smoking the tobacco while driving. Okay, okay right. So right. Uh, he said, when I got out of my car, I quickly realized that my equilibrium was failing, so I had a good sit down for a few minutes. Uh, maybe it was my empty stomach. Maybe it was the tobacco, uh, but it was very sneaky and sinister either way. So, and either way, he shouldn't have been driving, it sounds like. I, you know, well, I mean, you know, you, you, you had an empty stomach. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know. You, Cornell, I've been there. Cornell and Deal typically pairs well with driving. Yeah. I, I, we, we support Cornell and Deal in, in driving. <laughs> maybe not Golden <laughs> just, Days. Just not, just not Golden Days, you are not on empty stomach. And maybe not Matthew Butler doing that. Right. right? Well, that's yeah. the thing. Uh, and then, of course, I have to, I have to submit my own for this. Ooh, I recently, yeah. uh, just, to, just to wrap up, smoked again uh, one of my favorite 
uh, strongest tobaccos. Uh, and of course, this is um, Dunhill Night, or I'm sorry, Dunhill Royal Yacht. Now, we we talked about Royal Yacht on the show before. Uh, this is a Virginia blend. I, it doesn't say so, but I'm convinced it's loaded with uh, Kentucky Dark Fired Burley, uh, which just, of course, has it is just dripping with strength. You know, it's just one of these things that you can smell the the buzz when you when just in the leaf, in the raw leaf. You know, mm-hmm. it's just such a such a good tobacco, but so strong. And uh, you know, Royal Yacht. It's one of those tobaccos that I like to smoke when I read. It helps me focus. Uh, it, it's it kind of makes your makes your heart thump a little bit. Uh, you know, and, and so it's one of those things that uh, is, is a good tobacco when you're trying to kind of center. Um, but it, it's one of those that you really can only smoke for me anyway, uh, it, like maybe half a bowl full. You know, I, I just I can't do more even on a full tummy. You know, I just can't do you more. Can't than, handle it. I, I just I just can't handle it. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's one of those things that, uh, you know, I, I have smoked too much and and then been forced to sit in one location uh, for for several minutes after that, wow. just just to not uh, just just to not uh, I mean to not yak. Is that is that one of those <laughs> blends that you smoke in and it's like your skin just jumps right off your body? I think it kind of does. It comes off my body, you know, like I feel exposed, like you know, maybe there's not anything covering me. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Like you're just yeah. out there hanging out. Yeah. Did, did you recently smoke some out of curiosity? Uh, yeah, not not too recently. Okay, but, but right. the effects linger, you know. So, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I, I may still uh, be under the influence. Interesting. Okay, yeah. all right. Well, that's that's good to yeah. know. That's so, uh, so sinister tobaccos, man. Do you have any sinister? Tobaccos? You know, I mean, uh, you know, it's it's already been mentioned, but you know, when I think of kind of a, a Halloween tobacco, the, the the Sleepy Hollow is really what I go to. Ever since I got uh, exposed to Sleepy Hollow when I was in uh, when I was in Vegas, man, it, it just it stuck with me. It the it, it's one of these rare occasions where like the flavor made such an impression that I've thought of it several times since then. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, oh man, like I, I, at some point I got to get some of the Sleepy Hollow. So I'm, I'm so glad to actually have some back in my possession this year. Uh, I've been enjoying it tonight. I'll be enjoying it uh, tomorrow during all the trick or treating. And uh, yeah, man, it's a it's and, a great blend. And the name Sleepy Hollow, you know, it 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 is a warm kind of a, a fall blend. You do think of autumn and all this, but it it kind of has the you know the Sleepy Hollow. You know, it's it's the like headless a, horseman. Well, kind of yeah, and it, it's creepy. You know, I mean, something maybe a lizard would crawl. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, you know? but Ichabod Thon, uh, not Ichabod Thon, Eobard Thon is from the Flash. Uh, Ichabod Crane. Uh, from the Headless Horseman. Is that, is that, yeah. He's from Sleepy Hollow. Okay. Okay. And so, uh, and so, yeah, that, I, I believe that's where the name is derived from. That, but yeah, yeah, but like that's and that's the thing. Like it is such a, uh, it's it's the Candy Man. It, it's the Candy it's Man. Just, it's the Candy Man. Hey, oh, do you know about David Pumpkins? Have we talked about David Pumpkins? Who's a, who's a David Pumpkins? He's his own thing. You really? Don't, you don't know about David Pumpkins? No, I have, I have, okay. no, I have no idea. Uh, Saturday Night Live did a, uh, a an animated special, a Halloween animated special. Uh, where they they took this character created by Tom Hanks on uh, on the the Halloween episode of SNL last year called David Pumpkins, and so it was so popular. Uh, it was kind of one of these like like out of nowhere sleeper hits where it was it kind of occurred during the election. So like while the <laughs> while the country was so polarized, the one thing that everybody could agree on was that David Pumpkins is hilarious. Yeah, no, 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 and it's Tom right. Hanks because you know who doesn't like Tom Hanks? So this year they made <laughs> in in the style of kind of like Frosty the Snowman and and you know those kind of animated holiday classics. They actually made a uh, a David Pumpkins Halloween special. Uh, in which David Pumpkins appears into the uh, into the pumpkin patch and helps kids realize the true meaning of Halloween. Oh, that's good. Which is candy. <laughs> right, right, right. Like at the end, the kid, the kid's like, "Oh, I get it. You wanted me to believe in myself because that's what Halloween's all about." I was like, "No, man, it's about the candy. You better get as much candy as you can. Yeah, man. get that candy, oh, man. That's it. That's and it. that's what Sleepy Hollow is. Get that candy, <laughs> man. It's 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 delicious, just like David Pumpkins." Uh, That's fantastic. Well, here's the great thing, man. You know, the 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 amazing thing is because there are so many different taste buds out there. Since there are so many uh, folks that have varying uh, uh, sinister tobaccos, from the the kind that is sweet on your on your taste buds to the kind that will just like just rip the skin right off of you. Uh, if you're sampling a lot of these tobaccos, you can't do that with a well seasoned pipe. You're gonna have to do that with a pipe that is built with specifically to get a clean smoke every single time. That's right, a fresh with, pipe. Oh, the freshest of of, of the fresh. And of course, I'm talking about the pipes that you get from our good friends at Missouri Meerschaum. That's right. That's right. They're they're affordable pipes. And so if you are trying some of these Halloween blends out, or any other sinister blend, or uh, or, or maybe non sinister blend for those of you that feel like being pansies this time of year and oh, and, and and like eating those. Uh, Sweet little delicious Christmas treats, uh, even though they may make you sick. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you, you know, you but but you, you gotta have a you gotta have a clean uh, pipe to try these things in. Something that uh, obviously is going to give you a good experience. Uh, the purest form of the tobacco. 
and uh, and and something that will um, you know not be. Uh, Cost an arm and a leg. You know, the great thing too is that a lot of people give Missouri Meerschaum corn cob pipes this time of year because they are so affordable. And the Missouri Meerschaum goes so well with so many different uh, uh, costumes. You know, maybe you are uh, Popeye the Sailor Man. Maybe you are actually, you know, some sort of um, a general that you're yeah, looking for. A, a Frosty big, the Snowman. Frosty the Snowman. You, can, right. you can pull that off this time of year. There's nothing wrong with it. But uh, one way or the other, if you have got a corn cob pipe, if you are incorporating your Missouri Meerschaum into your costume this year, take a picture, send it in to us. We'd love to retweet those out. That's a great way to let the good folks. Folks at Missouri Meerschaum know that you appreciate them for sponsoring this show. All right, Man Pipe Question of the Week. Now, this is great, Man Pipe Question of the Week. This week is actually brought to us by uh, a sponsor, our good friends over at Father the Flame. Yeah, man. Shoot. Father the Flame. All right. Now, I know that a lot of you guys have been looking for an update from the good folks at Father the Flame. This is a documentary that kind of walks through kind of the, the pipe carving process and just the community surrounding uh, kind of the, the pipe smoking community. It's one that we've been invested in just personally from, uh, you know, from the last several years. Well, of course, we, we have some about. really good friends over there. Oh, absolutely. I'm, I'm wearing a beard core shirt right now as I I always do on the show uh, to show uh, my love and support for Beardcore, who's been. Uh, you ever watch that? No, never. I, I wear it every single every single week. I think he'd approve. I just uh, I leave it here and put it on right before the show. Oh, that's foul. Father of the Flame guys, they are having an online auction to help raise funds. Uh, they're doing the sound mixing right now, and it is nearly complete. The film is almost there, but they need some help to get it over the uh, finish line. Uh, this auction it's going to contain pipes by uh, Lee Eric, who of course is featured very heavily in in the uh, upcoming documentary. That's right. Uh, other another Michigan Michigan nerd. Uh, uh, native Robert E has some pipes, a unique pipe by, and you're gonna have to have to help me with this. Uh, Chacon, Chacon, Chacon. They they made the Father the Flame uh, logo pipe, right? And we, we've actually got a couple here at the shop, but they uh, they're they're readily available at some different places and uh, and are high quality pipes made by uh, the French pipe maker Chacon. That's right. And so they're looking for for folks, of course, to participate in the auction. But if you've got some like pipes or some prizes that you also want to donate as part of the auction as well, reach out to our friends over at Father the Flame through email, uh, social media, basically uh, wherever they can be found. Uh, and uh, yeah, man, this is going to be great. And uh, that is coming later this month. We're really excited about it. Yeah, yeah. We got got some, like we said, really good friends at Father the Flame. Uh, we know, um, you know, they've worked really hard on this, and they're getting so close to the finished product. And so uh, we want to help push them over the top. We're excited to do that. Absolutely. Details on Facebook, Twitter. We'll be putting that out there. And, of course, in the show notes for this episode. All right, man. Pipe question this week comes in. This is uh, from Sean Quinn, who says, Good day, gentlemen. My favorite tobacco is McClellan's Syrian Super Balkan. Now, obviously, good tobacco, man. Oh, good yeah, tobacco. Yeah, that's some, that's some, that's some flavor palettes going on right there. Uh, that means nothing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> obviously, it's not available anymore. But uh, a few weeks before they ran out, I ordered about ten tents. Good. Uh, he says five are left. He gifted a few, smoked a few, and kept the rest. His question is multifaceted. How do I preserve what I have? Uh, he said he tended. It was tended back in two thousand and six. Uh, and when it's gone, what do I move on to? Uh, <laughs> yeah. says, thank you. This again is Sean Quinn. Yeah, man, Sean, I, I'm, I'm just glad you got uh, these tins when you could. I mean, it, it, these, this was really fabulous tobacco. And this is coming from someone who doesn't smoke uh, a lot of Latakia, as, as most of you know. Uh, this this tobacco is, uh, it was so interesting. Corsirian Latakia, it's semi-sweet, uh, just kind of a, uh, a smooth, sultry blend that, uh, you know, it, it just left you left you always wanting for more. Mm. I, I loved this tobacco. It was so, so good. And I wish more people would have uh, gotten a hold of it um, when it was out. But anyway, uh, yeah, so you, you've got these tins. They were tinned in 2006. Um, uh, you know, and, and I'm guessing that, uh, Sean, you have deduced this from looking at the bottom of the can. Uh, you know, and so, uh, you know, what you'll want to do uh, before you, uh, before you, uh, before you cut the can open, you, you'll want to, uh, you know, make sure that you have, uh, you, you know, just uh, the, the, the best uh, place to put it after that. And so you're going to have, uh, you know, some mason jars ready and things like that. But honestly, the, the can that the tobacco is already in, it's going to be, um, you know, the best place to keep it until you're ready to open it. So as long as it's in a cool, dry area, uh, you know, not, or a, a dark area, not, uh, overly hot or anything the the can in its unopened original tin uh will be just fine and uh and you know this is uh 
you know, tobacco that'll keep for a while. Of course, Latakia ages well, uh, and and you know the lifespan of the of it is is relatively long. I was I'm thinking, you know, if this was made in 2006, you're probably you're probably looking at peak like right now, or maybe maybe next year or the year after that. So, uh, you know, you're going to want to go ahead and probably start opening these cans, smoking them up. Uh, you know, maybe uh, maybe keeping a few, uh, you know, closed up for. Uh, posterity just to say you got some put back kind of thing but the the prime smoking for it i think is going to be right now that's good uh yeah you know as far as uh, as far as moving on to to the next thing what you know what you're going to enjoy and what uh you know is going to bring you pleasure down the road that's similar um you know that that's anyone's guess right i mean it, it's uh th this is a hard this is a hard thing to to figure out for all of our syrian latakia lovers of course syrian latakia it's more floral uh it's more complex it's got uh, you know, maybe maybe people would say less strength, you know, more uh, subtlety to it. So, you know, I, I think you just look for a blend that that maybe has some of those things. Uh, of course, we always love the Frog Morton blends. They're good kind of softer, uh, you know, uh, tobaccos that feature Latakia. But, you know, there just really is nothing like Syrian Latakia. You may you may look for mm -hmm. tobaccos that have Latakia in them, but also are more of the Lakeland school of tobaccos. So maybe something from uh, Gay with and Hogarth, Sam Gay with something like that. Uh, but, um, yeah, well, you know, we'll have to think about that and see if anything comes to mind of what, uh, could be a good tobacco, uh, to, uh, you know, to, to for, for our Syrian folks to pick up. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. Our, our episode that we did back on Syrian Latakia, um, gosh, I guess it was several months ago at this point, but, um, you know, on, on YouTube in particular, that has been one of our most popular viewed shows. Cause I think there's a lot of questions in terms of, you know, what's, what's been going on, what, ha what happened. And, and then of course, what do you do with what you got? Yeah, so that's right. That's, that's a right. great question. Thank you so much for sending that in Sean. And Hey, if you got a pipe question of the week, send it in, see our country squire radio mm, show at country squire radio.com. Again, that is show at country squire radio.com. All right. Quick fire questions. Ow! All right, man. We got some quick fire questions in. This come in from the good folks over at thispipelife.com. That's this right. Pipe .com. More information on them in just a second. Uh, now, this is actually from user over there, Ghost of Pompeii. Appropriate since it's... Uh, That's good. It's Halloween. That's I keep forgetting. For it's weird. I keep on forgetting that it's Halloween. That it's this, Halloween. This is our Halloween special. Well, there's, I, there's nothing around us that would remind us. I kind of feel like we should have so. done some, a bigger deal or something. Yeah, like I, I agree. Uh, Ghost of Pompeii. Uh, he writes in, this is continuing on from last week with this kind of Halloween themed questions. Are you ready, sir? Yeah, bring it. Full orchestra film score or synthesizer? Oh, full or orchestra. The synthesizer has its place, right? And I think its place is in horror films. Because no. that's the thing. You got to remember, like, this is specifically in the horror genre. Oh, okay. No, okay. I got you. Um, yeah, well, synthesizer. You know, actually, uh, my uh, girl, I was about to say girlfriend, fiance. Now, fiance. Uh, which, which I'm still having to get used to saying. Yeah. Uh, it is. Um, Can I just say, ever since you got engaged, you, you're just glowing. You, There's you just something about you that just looks a little different. I, I don't know what it is. Yeah, I don't know. It, 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 I, I, she really has brought something out of you. That's I, for I sure. certainly, I certainly feel better. So um, yeah, 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 th yeah. Thanks, thanks. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, you know, the um, uh, we we're going through Stranger Things again, right? The, the Stranger Things show, of course, it's a Netflix original. Uh -huh. Right, 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 uh, right. Everyone's right. watching it. We won't talk about the next one, hopefully, because I haven't seen the well, next. Don't one, talk about but, the first one. I still haven't but, seen the first. But, one yeah, yet. well, we you know we're going through the first one right now. We yeah. won't mention any specifics, but it does have kind of that early nineteen uh, eighties. Uh, kind of feel to it, and the synthesizer just mm. real prolific through there. So uh, yeah, I, I go with the synthesizer. That, that, That's I, good. In my and like like you said, the synthesizer has it, has its place, but horror movies is definitely that place. Yeah, yeah. Um, two legged werewolves or four le legged werewolves? The, uh, is the werewolf standing up, or is, or is it running fours? like a dog? That's kind right. Of thing. Yeah. That's right. Uh, I I'm probably gonna go with uh, running like a dog. Interesting. Yeah, I think I, for some reason, even though that would probably be slower, well, I don't know. Maybe it'd be faster. Yeah, I, think it'd be I, faster. I, think, I think that's scarier to me because it's less human. See, that's you know? the thing. I always assumed that when the werewolf was running like a dog, it was more of like a warg. It was like more of like more wolf than man, you know, like just kind of a, a beastly wolf as opposed to a werewolf, which yeah. is more of the, you know, the, the one standing up. Now, yeah. I mean, you know, you can do the hunched back and all that kind of good stuff, but I think I'm going to go with two. Oh, okay. Go with two. Okay. Uh, savage, uh, savage looking 30 days of night vampires are pretty boy twilight vampires. Well, we know where you're going with this one. Right. I, you know, I, obviously sparkle baby, baby we, sparkle. <laughs> no, I, I think I'm going to go with the savage looking vampire. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to go right in the middle. 
I was a big Buffy the Vampire Slayer fan back in the day. I, okay, that's fair. They did some, fair. They did kind of a cool thing with the with the lore of it, and I, I don't I don't think Joss Whedon actually came up with this. I think he actually stole it from somewhere else. But um, but where the vampires actually when they they look like human until they start like demoning out, in which okay. case like their foreheads kind of expand and they have kind of this you know that raised eyebrows and all this other stuff. Yeah, no, that's right. It's a little bit kind of a blending of the two, and I liked that because you didn't quite know who was a vampire until it was too late. It's creepy. Good deal. Okay. All right, and then also we've got uh, one giant spider or a million little spiders. Man, there's nothing more terrifying than a million little spiders. Like, <laughs> because then they're crawling all up in your mouth and stuff, and, like, you got those, you know, old mummy movies and stuff where they're just, like, mm. you know, all the scorpions are getting on you and everything. Like, I, I, a bunch of a bunch of little tiny creepy crawly things that can take over and consume you. Um, that That's just awful. That, that That's awful. It, it does make your skin crawl. I, I, it's, I think it's cutting. It, it is. It is. Uh, that's to, it. to the soul. We, we need to talk about this tamp that you've got here. We'll talk about that in a second. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, we, that uh, that is true. I am more of a fan, I think, of like the big spider, though. I, I just like the fantasy element of like a giant spider, like seeing like Samwise Gamgee up against like the, the big uh, Shelob and, and everything. Yeah. Uh, I, I just No, I, that makes sense. It's, it's probably more epic feeling. It is. Than, than creepy. But yeah. at the same time, that's what you're going for, that's right? It's, it's, it's creepy. No, that's, that's, yeah. But like, remember, all right, so I know that it's it's not as beloved as, as the Lord of the Rings movie, but in the Hobbit movies, did you ever watch the Hobbit movies? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so they're in um the the the... <laughs> the wizard that was smoking something that was not tobacco in his pipe. You know which one I'm talking about? Uh, no. You don't know what I'm talking about? I guess I don't remember that. I can't remember the guy's name, but he was like, he was like the brown coated, uh, wizard. And so he was in his, like, he was trying to like, like revive this hedgehog. And in the process, there were giant spiders crawling out side of his house <laughs> and it was creepy man like it was really it was creepy that's what you get for reviving hedgehog giant spiders yeah. is what i'm gonna go with right okay. there okay. thanks so much ghost of pompeii of course ghost of pompeii a user over at thispipelife.com uh amazing online community if you haven't joined up yet uh use the code csr when you do it lets the good folks over there know you heard about them from this show we love the folks at thispipelife.com not to be confused with thispipewife.com that's right the number one online dating site that does not exist Yet. Use the code CSR <laughs> when you register at thispipelife.com. The thing is, if you're on thispipelife.com, which you should be, you may you may find, you know, Mrs. Claus there. That's right. That's or, right. Yeah, I mean, I'm just saying it could happen. It could happen. I, I love that you want Mrs. Claus, even though it's Halloween. That that made me happy. Yeah. Well, you know. Or, you know or, yeah. or, or Minnie Mouse. Whatever you dress up as. Or, you know, or, or if you're a female and you're listening, Mickey Mouse. CSR. <laughs> CSR. <to> <laughs> <laughs> CSR to sign up at this point. It's coming off the rails here tonight. All the it's coming way, off the rails. All, all right, man. Listener feedback. All right. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm just going to dedicate listener feedback to, to one thing, one thing only tonight. And that is the UK pipe show. Now, of course, the UK pipe show, we've been building up to this for the last several weeks. The War of the Roses, uh, the, the, the pipe tobacco showdown that has never seen the light of day like like no other pipe tobacco showdown has has ever been as epic as what transpired in the uk this last past weekend that's right war of the roses coming back lancaster versus york lancaster specifically versus the white rose two various country squire radio to our country squire tobaccos uh smoked in the uk first of all before before and again i have not read this email i don't know who the winner is i assume i, I and i don't either do you not? I, I I really don't. So you don't know either. I have no no. Idea. So we're going into this like completely cold. All right, yeah. here we go. All right, so so this is in this this email comes in to us from Toking Tommy. Uh, Toking Tommy, by the way, representing Yorkshire. Uh, yeah, we we had York, Yorkshire guys. Yorkshire. And we had Lancashire guys. Lancashire right? guys. Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. and so the, the you know these guys, of course, the, the representing their various uh, hometowns is good spirited thing, right? And we get this That's feedback. Right. That's right. All right, here we go. All right, so so uh, he writes in. This is again talking Tommy. He says, "Hello, Country Squire Radio. First of all, I'd like to say I give a huge thank you to both JD and Bo uh, for all the shout outs for the UK Pipe Show on the podcast, and of course for the White Rose and Lancaster samples. By now, though, you've no doubt heard the tragic news that somehow Lancaster won. Oh, Bo! And he, I, 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 oh, I'm sorry, man. That's that's got to feel like death. <laughs> I, I, I just the, it feels like the hand of death just grabbed my shoulder just, just, right now. Just grabbed you, yeah, that's, dude. I, I'm I'm sorry, Lan so Lancaster won. Okay, 
D despite he says, despite being the yeah, far I can't read the rest of inferior blend. Would you like me to pick up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. so he he says uh, La Lancaster won. Uh, La Lancaster beat White Rose Why? as Why? the uh, as as the as the winner between the two. You of people. And uh, and 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 so he says. Uh, now I'm not saying that they were there was any cheating going on, as I trust James implicitly. Uh -huh. uh, but a rematch may have to be held. Yes, sir. Uh, under stricter observation in yes, the future. Sir. Uh, which leads me to say that there will definitely be a show in 2018. Uh, hashtag UK Pipe Show 2018. 2018. Um, maybe we should try to go to that. Um, dude, I am so in. That that would be awesome. I, I might have another trip to London that I'm trying to like coincide around that time. Yeah, so it could be good. It's gonna happen. Okay, so um, more details to follow in the new year, but hopefully it'll be uh, in the summertime. Um, I'll keep everyone posted when there's an update. I'd hope to get some film footage. Uh, from the show and the War of the Roses, but it was just too busy on the day. Trust me, we understand. Uh, Bo and I, of course, uh, have been to pipe shows and, and host events here, and we try to get as much media as we can, but we, we, we get it. There's oh, a lot, no, yeah, lot yeah, going yeah, on, particularly on these these kinds of days. Uh, but, uh, d but he says, but despair not, uh, because there was footage recorded by some of my fellow YouTubers. Oh, great. Uh, yeah. Smoking Mr. Rhubarb, uh, the peach, the Peachies 13, mm -hmm. uh, and the Pipe Modus. Uh, if you check out their channels, you'll find videos of the show. And for now, I've attached some photos, uh, which we'll, we'll post later, yeah. of the event uh, for, for us to enjoy. So anyway, thank you once again, guys. You really wow. do rock. Keep up the good work. Uh, with the podcast, your friend Toking Tommy Bo, I'm uh, I'm 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 genuinely sorry. T Tommy, no, he said it himself. There was there was foul play potentially that, at at work here. That, that there could have been. You can't trust those Lancaster. Well, I'm just Lan saying, you know, is, is it one of those things that you know? Is, do you do, do you find the? That's you know, how they won the War of the Roses in the first place, man. They you were, think you think like funny business? They that, they murdered the children, the York children. They murdered them. I. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. They took them out. But anyway, um, guys, well, that's tough, dude. We're just so glad y'all uh, had a chance absolutely. to smoke our blends and, of course, uh, have some fun with that. And, uh, I mean, it, it's so great to see, uh, you know, the pipe culture flourishing in the United Kingdom. And, uh, and, and, man, we're just glad to be a little part of that. And I will say, you know, so like going to this, we, we really didn't know what was going on. I tried very hard to get some UK uh, pipe show uh, attendees yeah. to actually tell me who won. And they would not do it because they wanted it to come specifically from uh, Tommy who put on the show. That's really cool. By the way, yeah. all the feedback that we heard from UK was that it was an amazing event. The location, the venue, as I understand it, the, the canal actually runs right through like the shop somehow. Like there's like the hangout area. Bizarre. It, it sounds so cool. So I really do. Um, you know, I'm, who knows what the future holds? But but if if there is any possible way that we can make yeah. it out to you guys next year, we absolutely will. So um, yeah, really really great stuff. Yeah, maybe we should start. Uh, you know, putting away some shekels for that. Well, I tell you what, man. The people the people who uh, help make this show happen, who, who help help support the shekels that make the show happen. <laughs> uh, why don't we reward them a little bit? Because of course we're getting right. giveaways here at the tail end of the show. That's right. Which one do you want to give away first? Oh uh, man, I, I think we should go with the. Uh, Corn cob pipe and a button nose. Corn, pi corn cob pipe and a button nose. All that's right. right. That's right. All right. First one up. So, of course, you have to be a uh, Country Squire Radio Club, club member. member as of uh, when was the last time we updated the list? Like so, literally today. Okay. So, yeah. so today. So you can't. So, so we hope you join tonight, obviously. But if you do join right now, you will not be in this in, in this in this drawing. <laughs> but the next uh, one. But you, you, know, but you could like, be in the next we, one because we, we we're going to do this periodically. This is something we do for fun uh, just to reward our, our loyal, uh, faithful listeners. All right. This comes in from member number 53, Travis Robinson. Travis Robinson. Travis Robinson. You have won a tin of Cornell and Deal, uh, corn cob pipe, and a cut and a button nose. And I'll tell you what, what I'll do, the great thing is this is being recorded, so I'll be able to uh, go back and, and figure out exactly who won later for my notes. <laughs> uh, all right, next one up. What's the next prize? Uh, the next one is a two ounce bag of Hunting Creek. Uh, straight from the Country Squire. Of course, we hand blend this here, uh, here in our shop, and uh, it's one of our more complex blends. It's, it's an English aromatic. Uh, it's one of those that has uh, just several ingredients in it. It's kind of a cocktail, but uh, a nice, warm, smoky blend. That's uh, that's also sweet. You'll get notes of vanilla and mm -hmm. uh, you know some nuttiness, but it's but it's also going to have a nice uh, Latakia background. And I've been so. enjoying the vanilla like really like aspect of a lot of tobaccos. Yeah, right now. yeah. This one goes to uh, our eighty fifth club member. Okay, uh, Brian C. Hanford. Man, Brian Hanford. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah, absolutely, right. man. We'll be sending you two ounces of Hunting Creek from the Country Squire. All right, and next up, uh, we've got a tin of Pembroke uh, from from Esoterica. So this is going to be. Uh, one of the one of the bigger prizes here. We've got Esoterica blends. Obviously, harder to get. Uh, Pembroke is a 
uh, just a really uh, special blend. It's cognac flavored and uh, one of their more interesting tobaccos. They're always pushing the envelope with these different casings. And uh, and, and and we think uh, whoever wins it will, will be happy. This one's going to John Kirk Griffin. John Kirk Griffin. Our first ever, he was our fourth, or he was our fourth member and our, our first ever Pilgrim member. Oh, that's great. Yeah, 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 yeah. So congratulations, John. Man, that's great. Yeah, congrats, man. We're we're uh, we're glad to send this off to you and uh, hope you make your friends jealous. And uh, and and finally, the big course, daddy, the, the, the grand prize, uh, uh, the the ten of Penzance uh, that does have one bowl missing in it. It has it has one bowl missing uh, in this in this particular tin, but uh, it's in good shape. We've taken good care of it here at the Country Squire. It's ready for your smoking enjoyment, and uh, and we're about to send it to. This goes to our 60th member, Miller. Miller, it's Miller time, dude. <laughs> Congratulations. That's great, man. All right. There you go, guys. Thank y'all so much. <laughs> and by the way, I mean, like just beyond beyond this, and we, we love to kind of uh, dote on you guys when we get a chance through uh, through some of these uh, giveaways from time to time, which we, we hope to do more of in the future, of course. But uh, those of you who are helping make this show happen, even those of you who are patrons, especially those of you who are club members, uh, that goes a long way. And, you know, we've, uh, as, as we're, you know, we're, October Halloween is kind of kicking off the holiday season and the holiday season is in of itself kind of the, the winding down of the year, but also the start as we kind of look into the next year. And so looking at things like possibly going to the UK pipe show and actually yeah, you, never know. you guys to the UK pipe show uh, virtually, that, that that's something we would love to do. And so, you know, who knows what the future holds if that's something that'll be possible. But those of you who are able to support the show, um, y'all are specifically making the show happen every single week. Yeah. And, uh, and allowing us to be able to bring more and more great content to you. And, and that's exactly what we strive to do in the future as well. That's right. That's right. D despite what you may have heard, death is nowhere near the show. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> I love how we have so many visual gags going There's on for a, a podcast. This yeah, is, no, this it's is, great. This is good. This is good. <laughs> 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 All right, guys. Well, uh, man, you know, we've, we've got, uh, of course, uh, a lot of great things that are going on, though. You can keep up with us throughout the week. Tune in to our own uh, Halloween nights by following us on Twitter. I'm at the Real Bo York. I'm at John David Cole, or you can get us at the shop at, at underscore Country Squire. <laughs> I'm sorry, Kurt. That's wrong. <laughs> that's wrong, buddy. Kurt just Kurt just put up a meme. <laughs> That's funny. It said Bo's wife found his account at thispipewife.com. <laughs> no, man. Come on. Come on, man. That's just wrong. That's yeah. wrong. You, just, you threw off my entire outro. <laughs> that's, that's pretty that's pretty good. That's, that's pretty good. Your, your head sinks in shame. I know. No, that's great. That that is a meme. That that's a good meme. No, that's, right a, that's, a, that's a solid that's meme. well done. Yeah. Uh let, let's uh Mike, we're gonna take that one from the top. Well, hey, of course, you can keep up with us what's going on for our trick-or-treating experience and beyond by following us following us throughout the week. I'm at the real Bo York. I'm at John David Cole, or you can catch us this, catch us at the shop at, at underscore Country Squire. Of course, uh, that information and more can be found at CountrySquireRadio.com, where you can tune in live on Monday evenings at 8.30 Central Time. That's a lot of other times for your own uh, specific time zone, which I don't have right in front of me right now. So, hey, Google it. You'll figure it out. It'll be great. <laughs> 8.30 <laughs> Central. Because, you know, math. You know, that's right. it's a little difficult. Hey, look. It's 8.30 it's 8 Central, 6.30 Pacific, 9.30 Eastern. I had to choose four random numbers out of 1 and 97, which, by the that's way... Enough, we, that's enough math for one. We have had 97 people sign up for the uh, Country Square Radio International Pipe Club. We are we are just three away from member 100. How about that? Dude, that's amazing. Is that not incredible? Yeah, we're so close. And, you know, the great, great. the great thing, of course, is that uh, as we build up to the 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 new year, you know, since we, we launched the Pipe Club at uh, on New Year's, um, those at the Squire level who joined in that in that first year will actually be getting their names on the wall here pretty soon. No, so it's it's going to be know, a pretty that, major milestone. That's right. I didn't think about that because right. we, of course, for for one year at the Squire level, you do get a brass plaque on the wall at at the physical Country Squire. So if you ever do make it to our shop, your your name will be here to uh, you know to 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 see. Absolutely, man. <laughs> well, hey, uh, trick or treat, dude. Uh, trick. Let's go have a night. Yeah, let's go have a treat. <laughs> <laughs> see you, brother. I feel like I should acknowledge that I blew my my personal prop budget on the roses last week. I just want to say that it has nothing to do with anything. I just no, you. you I just I, wanted to put that out there. You, you think it? You think it affected your prop tonight? I don't, what props? Uh, no, that's a good point. I just wanted to say that I I I, I blew my prop budget. Well, well, well you look great. Uh, well, thank you. I, I feel like I always do. Yeah, I, I look like sin. Accurate. But what's what else is new? <laughs> <laughs> good night. Buddy. Good night, everybody.